الصلاة الصلاة وما ملكت أيمانكم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear Muslim brother and sister السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We were commanded by our Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام to pray in the exact manner in which he prayed as he directed us to do in the hadith narrated by Al-Bukhari which means Pray as you have seen me pray. Many Muslims are unaware of the true description of the prayer of the Prophet ﷺ. This production was composed so you can hear and see for yourself the full and true description of the Prophet's prayer and then adhere to his practice. To commence the prayer, stand up after having fulfilled all its preconditions which are Facing the direction of Kaaba, known as Al-Qibla. Covering parts of the body which are mandatory to cover, known as Al-Awra. Being in the state of ritual purity. Being fully attentive in your heart and mind of the particular prayer which you intend to perform without uttering the intention. You should pray behind an object as high as a handspan or directly behind a wall, a pillar, or any other similar object, as this was the proven practice of the Prophet ﷺ. This object is known as sutra. To start the prayer, you must say, Allahu Akbar, which means, Allah is the greatest. This phrase is known as, Takbiratul Ihram. There is no other phrase which can replace this takbira. This takbirah must be said while standing because the Prophet ﷺ said what means say the takbir while standing. If you are unable to pray while standing due to illness for example then you should do your best to pray in any other position which is physically possible. In any case however you must certainly say the takbirah. During this takbirah do not excessively extend the vowel, which is the A, in the middle of the word Allah. The Imam leading a congregational prayer shall raise his voice while saying this takbirah, so those behind him can hear it. If you are praying alone or behind an Imam, you need not say this takbirah loudly. However, you must move your tongue with the phrase as authentically reported. Raise your hands while saying the initial takbirah. It has been authentically reported in the sunnah that you may raise your hands just before, during, or just after saying this takbirah. While raising your hands, keep them spread open without cupping. Your fingers shall not be closed tight nor widely spread apart. Your fingers shall reach the level of your shoulders. This is one of the two authentic forms of raising one's hands. The other is for the fingers to reach the earlobes. You may choose either of these two forms. Raising the hands apply to both men and women. If you are unable to raise one of your hands due to a certain ailment, you should still raise the other one in order to apply as much of the sunnah as possible. Where should you place your hands after this takbirah? You should place them on your chest with the right hand over the left one. There are two forms of putting the right hand over the left one. The first is to place the right hand flat over the left hand, wrist, and arm. The second is to grab the left hand with the right hand. If you alternate between these two forms, your practice would then perfectly concur with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Place your hands on your chest and not on your navel, nor below it, nor above the chest. Some scholars state that you should place them between your breasts. It is not permitted to place the hands on the waist during prayer, which contradicts appropriate submissiveness to Allah. You shall always gaze at the floor in humility during prayer. 
lowering your head and looking to the place of your prostration, except when you are reciting a tashahud, in which case you should keep your gaze at your index finger while moving it. This will be further explained in the presentation. Dear Muslim, placing your hands on the chest and lowering your head while looking at the place of prostration reflects submissiveness before Allah the Almighty. It is also a reflection of good manners before one's Lord. You must keenly maintain this during your prayer. And remember that Allah turns his face towards the face of his slave during the prayer for as long as he does not gaze away. You must struggle to keep shaitan from distracting you during prayer. If the whispers of shaitan become too powerful, it is permitted for you to seek refuge in Allah and lightly spit three times to your left without emitting any spittle. Immediately after this takbirah, initiate your prayer by reciting one of the great opening supplications known as Dua ul istiftah The companions of the Prophet والسلام, asked him about what he says when he briefly pauses in silence after the initial takbirah. So he taught them the opening supplications of the prayer. There are various supplications you can say at the start of the prayer. It is best to alternate between them in different prayers. Among the known opening supplications is saying, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, wa tabarak asmuk, wa ta'ala jadduk, wa la ilaha ghayruk. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, wa tabarak asmuk, wa ta'ala jadduk, wa la ilaha ghayruk. Which means, glory and praise is due to you, O Allah. Blessed is your name, lofty is your greatness, and there is no deity worthy of worship except you. Another opening supplication is, Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayaya, kama ba'adta bayna al-mashriqi wal-maghrib. Allahumma naqini min khatayaya, kama yunaqqa al-thawb al-abyad min al-danas. اللهم اغسلني من خطاياي بالماء والثلج والبرد. Another opening supplication is اللهم باعد بيني وبين خطاياي كما باعدت بين المشرق والمغرب. اللهم نقني من خطاياي كما ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس. اللهم اغسلني من خطاياي بالماء والثلج والبرد. Which means O oh Allah, distance me from my sins as you have distanced the east from the west. O oh Allah, cleanse me from my sins as a white garment is cleansed from filth. O oh Allah, wash my sins away with water, snow, and hail. For more information about these supplications and other details, you can refer to books written by scholars. A good example of such books is the one written by the great scholar Al-Albani Rahimahullah, which is titled The Prophet's Prayer Described from Beginning to End As Though You See It. After the opening supplication, you shall take refuge in Allah from Shaytan before recitation by saying, A'udhu Billahi min shaytanir rajim min hamzihi wa nafkhihi wa nafthi which means, I seek the protection of Allah from the cursed satin, from his whispering, blowing, and clammy breath. It has also been authentically reported that the Prophet ﷺ would occasionally say instead, أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفثه which means, I seek the protection of Allah the all-hearing, the all-knowing, from the cursed satin, from his whispering, blowing, and clammy breath. This is only to be said before recitation at the beginning of the first rak'ah, as per the opinion of a number of scholars. Then say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, which means, in the name of Allah, 
the most merciful, the most gracious. This phrase is known as Al-Basmalah. The most authentic opinion of the scholars is that you must not say this phrase loudly. Then recite Surah Al-Fatiha as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what means no prayer is valid for those who do not recite Al-Fatiha within them. If a person is new to Islam or does not speak Arabic and cannot recite Al-Fatiha then he may alternatively say Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa Allah wallahu akbar wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah which means glory is due to Allah praise is due to Allah there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Allah is the greatest there is neither any change of condition nor any power except by the will of Allah. It is an obligation to recite Surah Al-Fatiha in both the quiet and the loud prayers and to say Ameen after finishing its recitation, extending its vowel, the E. After reciting Al-Fatiha, recite another chapter from the Quran, whether short or long. When you finish the recitation, pause long enough to take a breath and then raise your hands while saying Allahu Akbar just before bowing down into the position of Ruku'ah. The benefit of this pause is that it marks a clear separation between the end of the recitation and the takbira of bowing. This is the second pause reported to have been performed by the Prophet ﷺ. The first being after the initial takbirah of the prayer. There is no evidence that he paused between Al-Fatiha and the following surah. Then bow down in ruku'ah, placing your hands firmly on your knees with your fingers spread apart while keeping the head and back level. The Prophet ﷺ used to level his back to the extent that if water were to be poured on his back, it would have settled there. While bowing in a tranquil manner, say, Subhana Rabbi al azim Subhana Rabbi al azim which means, Glorified is my Lord, the Almighty. Or you can say, Subhana Rabbi al azim wa bihamdi, which means, Glorified is my Lord, the Almighty, and all praise is His. Both are authentic narrations. You may also add, Subbuhun Quddus, Rabbul Malaikati wa Ruh. Subbuhun Quddus, Rabbul Malaikati wa Ruh. Which means, Glory to you, most holy you are, Lord of the angels and the Holy Spirit. It has also been reported that the Prophet ﷺ said during Ruku'ah, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, Allahumma ghfir li. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, Allahumma ghfir li. Which means, glory and praise are due to you, O Allah. I beg forgiveness for my sins. The Prophet ﷺ has forbidden reciting the Qur'an during bowing or prostrating. After you complete ruku', raise your head and hands from the bowing position while saying, سَمِعَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَهُ Which means, Allah hears he who thanks him. This phrase is said whether you are leading the prayer or praying alone. When you reach the standing position, say, Rabbana wa laka alhamd, which means, Our Lord, and for you is all praise. Or you can say, Rabbana laka alhamd, which means, Our Lord, for you is all praise. Both are authentic narrations, one with and one without the letter wa, meaning and. You may say instead one of the following supplications, both of which are also authentic. Allahumma rabbana wa laka alhamd, which means, O oh Allah, our Lord, and for you is all praise. 
or Allahumma Rabbana Lakal Hamd, which means, O oh Allah, our Lord, for you is all praise. It is preferred to add the following to any of the above supplications. Mil as Samawati wa mil al Arb wa mil ama shita min shayim bad, which means the heavens, the earth, and all that which you will, in addition, are abundant with your praise. This is a magnificent way of praising Allah, which is raised by the angels to the heavens. Once in the upright position, you must remain standing for a period similar to that of your rukur, as this is an important pillar. A question arises here. Where does the person put his hands after standing up from the position of bowing? After straightening up from bowing, one should place his hands back on his chest just as they were prior to going into the bowing position. If he keeps his hands down by his sides, however, this would concur with the opinion of a group of scholars who consider this to be in accordance with the sunnah. Go down to the floor for the position of prostration, sujood, while saying, Allahu Akbar. Another question arises here. Does a person go down into the position of sujood, placing his hands on the floor first or his knees? The scholars have differed regarding the issue whether the hands or the knees should reach the floor first. We need to know which of the two opinions concurs more with the sunnah, because each group of scholars has substantial evidence to prove their opinion. Perhaps the sounder opinion is of those who rule that one must go down into the position of prostration, placing his hands on the floor first. It is noteworthy to say that either of the two ways is acceptable, as this is not an issue over which one should condemn those who hold a contrary opinion, because the scholars themselves have differed regarding their understanding of the relevant texts from the sunnah. During sujood,